forgotten. What was my favorite non-televised moment? Yeah, P.S. Will you make Rick do five push-ups? Rick, why are you after you? Yeah. moment. Oh, there were a lot. Because, I mean, we weren't on camera 24-7. There was a lot of times when we were on our own or getting ready to be televised. And, um, no, I was speaking. That was televised. Um, when you were streaking. When I was streaking, that too was televised. I think so. I jumped in the pool in my underpants, but they made it look like I was totally naked. That's what I heard. Like, you mean where your like, lips out and everything? <laughs> no, where are your lips? I think. I was drunk. <laughs> I was drunk a lot. <laughs> oh, good. What? When I split my pants. I, I, that wasn't televised, but I guess you guys heard about it. It was pretty funny. That's not my favorite, but it was pretty fucking funny. My dad's in the audience. I'm wearing my Got Balls shirt, and the censors don't know that that there's a giant leather guy adjusting his sack on my shirt. I see them running the clipboards like, what's that guy doing on his shirt? Oh my god, run it back! <laughs> Meanwhile, um, the Supernova guys are like, you know, we love your song, we love your voice, we don't want to scare you into not being yourself or being dramatic. And I was like, right on, dudes, I'm going to scare the fuck out of you next week. And I dropped into a split, and from my button to my butthole, pants, open. Dad right there, ass out, underpants, like, um, well... Uh, but I think my favorite non-televised moment was probably on the plane to Vegas. You might have seen it. I don't know. Was there? Did you guys see us on the plane to Vegas? Did you see me crushing Tommy's rib cage with my legs? No. We, uh, Jason Newstead and I were sitting together and we were having some food, and he goes, "Keep your eye on Tommy because he might make the pilot fly upside down." He likes to do that. And I was like, fuck that. I've been up for like, we, it was elimination day, so we get up really, really early in the morning. And I was like, fuck that, I will throw up, and I, this is my first trip to Vegas, I'm not puking on a private plane on Jason Newstead, and my first fucking trip to Vegas. I said, don't worry, dude, I'll bring him down. And so Tommy, sure enough, within like 20 minutes, he's like, he called me mama. And he's like, Mama, get, look, I, Mama, I, I want to I wanna talk to the pilot. I want to talk to the pilot. And I get up, and I, it was a small plane. And I get up, and I put my hands and legs out like this. And I'm like, Tommy, if you try to get to the pilot, I'm taking you out. <laughs> and he smiled, and he's like, oh, no, it's really fun. No, you'll love it. You'll totally love it. And I was like, I'm taking you out. <laughs> And so what happened was a little bit of a wrestling match ensued, which ended up with me leg locking him around the rib cage. <laughs> just he's a skinny little boy. I just went and uh, I think I popped the rib out of place and he sat very, very still for the rest of the time. that eats your eyebrows when you're sleeping at night that lives in your skin, so I would credit my eyebrows to them. I don't, I, I actually have very, very blonde eyebrows and I pet them. I do it myself. When are you getting married? How 
Will I ever publicly refuse to perform the national anthem? Performed. Performed the, where, have you ever publicly performed the national anthem? Yes, here. Every week I did the national anthem. Yeah. And uh, the ball song, Star Spangled Pusher Noya. I sing the Star Spangled Banner over um, Curtis Mayfield's Pusher Man. It's our anti-war anthem. So, will you be playing Dante's on a Wednesday again? Never! <laughs> For one million dollars. <laughs> we, will, we will definitely traipse across this stage again, if they will have us. It will probably be under different circumstances, but we will absolutely play Dante's again. It'll be different, but it'll be here. It'll be balls. Was Lucas the best choice for Supernova? I think so. I think so. I think Lucas and Delana both had this thing that I love personally as a consumer of music. They kind of walk that androgyny line. Yes. Lucas is very sexual man, man's man. He loves pussy, he loves girls. He's very flirtatious. But he has that androgynous um, Bowie, um, uh, Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Who am I thinking of? Uh, Peter Murphy. Peter Murphy. He's Marilyn Manson. But you know, Lucas is a little more soft and and lemurish. You know, he's like a cute. He's sexual, but he's also very adorable, and children love it. And it's, he's really, really adorable. Seriously, he's got a huge heart. And I think, and I think he was the best choice for Supernova because I think, you know, at the end of it all, they wanted a man. It wasn't that they wanted a man from the beginning. They were seriously considering us. Yes, they were. You weren't there. Yes, they were. They absolutely were considering each member of the 15 cast members as a potential singer and they put us through the fucking ringer and ultimately they wanted Lucas and he was a great choice I think it's a great choice he's going to bring a lot of color and a lot of range to them he walks that line of male and female so I think he's a good choice when are you? when am I? when am I? when am I? Like? Yeah, how much influence? Manipulation. Manipulation, you know what? Um, I don't watch a lot of television, um, which was weird for me to be on a television show, especially reality TV. I didn't really watch a lot of reality TV, but from what I understand from the people that work for Mark Burnett, they were the best in the business. And Mark Burnett is one of the most respectful and respectable uh, executives in the business, and he treats us all really well. I mean, every now and then you feel like an ant, like a pretty, pretty ant in an ant farm. But he would always pull me aside and be like, you, you are doing, you're doing a great job, just a fantastic job, and you just, you don't, you just, you just, you just, you are, you you potentially the most frightening person. <laughs> you've got, you've got the the longest criminal record. You're you're potentially such a troublemaker. You're just a sweet girl. A sweet girl. <laughs> That's what Mark Burnett said. <laughs> and he really cared about us. We gave him a hell of a show. And he treated us really, really well. And I, I, I'm still under contract with Mark Burnett Productions, and I'm honored to be there. Because they treated me incredible. They could have made me look so bad, I'm sure. And they treated me so well. And, and, and they made me look, I felt really cool because they cared about me. They cared about me as a person. Oh, I, oh, believe me, I could. Ask my fucking boyfriend. I can look bad. 